If you're not finding the level of success that you desire, it's not about working harder or putting in more hours. It's about unblocking yourself, getting out of your own way. And today on I Am Vibrant, I'm distilling some of the most effective techniques and strategies to do just that. Starting now on I Am Vibrant. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of I Am Vibrant. This is Leah Lund, and this is the show where spiritually conscious leaders come to fill up their cup. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a business executive, if you're leading a movement or a foundation or a nonprofit or a government or a church or a family, this is a place that you can come for some motivation, some strategy, some inspiration, and some nourishment so you can keep going with the important work that you're doing in the world. So nothing hijacks us and our energy and drains us and burns us out more than self-sabotage. And yet over and over again, as I coach my entrepreneur clients, I find ways that they are the ones getting in the way of their own success. Of course, not intentionally, uh, but here's a sign. This could be you if you're feeling overwhelmed, If you're feeling overstressed, if you're procrastinating, if you doubt yourself, and if in general, when you get ready and you get excited to do something, then you start to not believe in yourself or not have the confidence to follow through. These are all signs of blocked energy. And the good news is they're all things that you can turn around. And that's what I'm teaching today. Top five ways to turn that around and get out of your own way. And this is so important because with self-sabotage, it's like a double whammy. You know, if we and we alone are the root of our own block, um, it feels bad. And on some level, you probably already know that. And then that adds and it's like a vicious circle of feeling bad. And so when you hit that stress point, when you feel any of those things like overwhelm or overstressed, you notice yourself getting short maybe with people, um, you're doubting, should I even be moving forward with this? Then it can also be really common to turn in that moment to emotional eating or to neglecting self-care or self-care for your body or your mind, emotional self-care, short change your sleep maybe. And the vicious circle just continues. So it's time for us to stop that circle and not from willpower, not from just, oh, positive thinking that the subconscious mind doesn't even believe because really those are things, those are self-sabotage too. I want, I'm going to share some more lasting strategies that will not only change your behavior and your mood, but most importantly, change your vibration. Why? Because everything is energy. And energy is our nature. And we're designed energetically to feel good, to feel vibrant, to create our successes from a place of ease and flow. But when we're not aware of our vibration and the things we're allowing to affect our vibration, things around us, as well as internally, like thoughts and foods, we can hijack our own energy. And The effects of that are all those things I mentioned, procrastination, overwhelm, stress, doubt, losing faith in yourself. So let's take a podcast, for example, because this is a really tangible, obvious thing. You're listening to a podcast right now. Do you ever get overwhelmed when you listen to podcasts? Do you start to see, oh, there's all these ideas or there's all these episodes or there's all these podcasts? Um, I see this happen all the time with personal development courses or even telesummits. And the reason that that starts to feel bad and actually paralyzes you sometimes from action versus what you'd think it would, which would be inspiring you to action, is because when you're consuming information, you're taking in energy, energy in the form of information. And if you don't do something with that energy pretty quickly, it collects, it bottlenecks, and, and it builds up, and it becomes energetic weight. There is uh, something known as the Ebbinghaus retention curve. 
And that research says that we humans, we forget 50% of what we learn in about 24 hours time. So it speaks to our you know, memory and our retention. But what's not discussed in the Ebbinghaus retention curve is the energetic effect of that. Not only do we forget what we learned, but we forget that it's there energetically speaking. And then if we don't take action on it, it sits there as energetic weight. So it's not only about the information here, it's about the action. And that same research shares that only about 1% of people act on good information that they already have. So my point in sharing that is to give one example of how you might be getting in your own way, collecting tons of information and not doing anything with it. And the big picture, and, and this can turn around quickly with this podcast. So from this podcast, from this episode, take one thing that you are going to take action on within 24 hours. I'm going to go through the five ways to get out of your own way. Pick one of them and take action on it within 24 hours so that you jumpstart your energetic circulation. And it doesn't become more information that builds up, gets stuck, sabotages you and gets in your way. Emotions are, it's just like emotions. Information can get stuck. Thoughts can get stuck. Emotions get stuck. If we don't feel them and we don't process them, even emotions can get stuck. So uh, take action on what you're going to learn. So let's dive in now though. So first of all, as I go through these top five, five ways you might be getting in your own way, know that everything that you do is for a good reason. And I say that so we don't get back in that circle of blame and self-criticism and self-doubt again. Everything that you do is for a good reason. The way the subconscious works and is designed to work is that it does what it thinks you want it to do. So it's trying to please you, protect you, and keep you comfortable. And that's a good thing at some time in some situations, especially when there's like a real threat. It's a good thing to um, to have a, a, a solid subconscious programming that keeps you out of danger or, or something like that. But it also carries over into far more areas than we would expect. And this logic and this reasoning is usually developed sometime and imprinted sometime between third third trimester before we're born and age seven. And so know that and know that if you're doing any of these things I'm about to share, then there's a subconscious reason, but you're not that seven-year-old anymore. You're not that six-year-old and you can make a new choice. And when you do, you release energy, you free energy, and you'll notice the overwhelm and the stress melting away, literally. Okay. So let's start with way number one that people get in their own way and block their success is that your brain might be blocking you. So before we even talk mindset and some of the other things that we're going to talk about, I want to talk about brain chemistry because this is such a roadblock. If you are depleted in certain feel good brain chemicals, you cannot think or willpower or wrestle or struggle your way into feeling better and out of feeling overwhelmed and stressed and wanting to procrastinate or maybe not having confidence. And this isn't anything to do with needing stronger willpower. I actually say willpower is the greatest form of self-sabotage because it will run out for everybody at some point. If you're biochemically depleted, it's not at all even about that. It's completely a biochemical thing. It's equivalent to trying to run a marathon, but you have a broken leg and you can think and think and think and maybe drag yourself along, but it's painful or you can heal the leg. You can train for the marathon and you can run the marathon. And that's how it works with brain chemistry. So there's four major types of brain chemical that are largely responsible for our focus and our motivation and how we feel. These are serotonin, And without serotonin, we will feel overwhelmed. We will feel irritable. We will feel a lack of confidence. We will feel stressed. There's a group of chemicals called catecholamines that literally are responsible for creating our drive 
and our motivation and keeping us focused and our concentration. So if the reserves of your catecholamines are depleted, you're going to be diminished in all of those areas. There's something called GABA that neutralizes our adrenaline. So if you're feeling tense and overstressed and, um, and maybe even feeling that physically in the body and feeling anxiety, you could be low in GABA and therefore you're filled with adrenaline from all the things that you're taking on and that you do. And um, you may even have a hard time sleeping. And then there's endorphin. And endorphin is a beautiful pleasure and natural pain killing chemical. So what happens if we don't have our natural ability to self-soothe, feel pleasure? We, we hurt, right? We have pain. Plus we go looking for something to fill that hole and give us comfort and give us pleasure or give us pain killing like numbing. And that comes in the form of all kinds of things from, you know, foods to substances to even activities, anything that ends in a holic, for example, is usually behavior. We do things for a good reason, right? So it's behavior in an attempt to compensate for low endorphin. So there's an easy way to know if you're depleted in any of these chemicals. I offer a 40 question. It's just a ranking one to 10, 40 different symptoms that are all signs of neurotransmitter depletion. And you go through and you just answer one to 10 and you'll know individually if you have high, any high numbers, you're depleted. If you have high numbers in all areas or you know many of them, then you're even more depleted in different ways and maybe in all four of those categories, which is the most common um, situation. If, if we're, our brain's depleted in one, it's that same reason that depleted serotonin would deplete endorphin, for example. Um, so it's easy to find out. It's free to find out. Just click on the link. Um, it's a bit.ly brain chemistry assessment and it's in the show notes and you'll know for yourself. And then you can decide if you want to reach out and find out about how we restore those levels, which is through neuronutrition or target otherwise known as targeted amino acid therapy. So number one way is your brain. Number two is your calendar getting in your own way. Do you align your time with your priorities from the get-go? I mean, that sounds pretty simple. And yet so few people do this. There was a wonderful study done years ago by um, a nurse and she was working with patients at the end of their life in hospice. And she interviewed them about their biggest regrets. And the top regret was not living for themselves. They felt like they lived somebody else's life, lived somebody else's priorities. The only way that your priorities are going to get the space in your day that they deserve is if you plan for that, if you set up your calendar that way. So making sure that before you write in all the responsibilities, the obligations, not even like daily routine things. Everybody has to shower. Everybody eats. Everybody commutes. Well, some people commute a lot fewer than used to. Uh, everybody grocery shops, you know, all those things, of course, account for them in the planner. But then literally think about what is most important to me in this whole week. If I only got one other thing done other than just like that, those daily routine type of things, what would it be? What matters to me most? Put it in your planner, your calendar, your phone, however you organize your time. As definite and as decisive as if it was an appointment with your dentist or your attorney or something like that, that you would never, ever, ever miss. So you make sure that your priorities, that your time is aligned with them. You have created space and time for your priorities to happen because we're blocking, if you're not doing that, you're blocking not only the time to literally work on what it is you truly, truly desire to create, but you're blocking your energy. Even if your, your priorities are personal in nature, and then let's say you have a career goal that you're working toward, plan time for your personal priorities that raises your vibration and you'll have a higher frequency vibration that you bring into working on your career project. 
So we can't, we can't isolate. Energy doesn't lie. Energy is always honest. If you're sacrificing your priorities in one area of your life, you're not going to have a high vibration for priorities in another area of your life. That's number two. Number three way you could be blocking your own success and how you can get out of your way is you could be blocking it from lack of self-care and you can get out of your own way by getting back to self-care. And this kind of tags on number two, put it in your planner. Of all the entrepreneurs and business leaders that I've worked with, and there's countless at this point, um, everybody knew importance of self-care. Every, every single one of them would have said, yes, I know self-care is very important, but far fewer made it an actual priority. So choose, I will start with three, choose three non-negotiables right now. Choose the three that you're the least consistent with. You know what that is. Choose it right now and recommit, put it in your calendar like an appointment, and start investing in your own energy. Because if you don't invest in your own energy, you literally have none to give to anybody else. And you won't be able to share your gifts. You won't be able to have the impact that you want to have in the world. And that's the same. That's true for anyone. So it's not, it's not a failure. You know, It's not a weakness. This is just, this is energy. This is how it works. You have to make some deposits and not only withdrawals in your energetic bank account of your body and your physical form. So right now, write down three non-negotiables for your self-care. It might be that you are going to start eating healthier, but be specific, eating what? It might be that you're going to stop eating something that you know drains your energy and makes you edgy and makes you less focused might be caffeine, might be sugar, might be alcohol. Maybe you want to set a non-negotiable about sleep. Sleep is one of the most amazing nutrients available to us. And every human body needs somewhere between seven and nine hours. But here's the thing. If you're getting less than six hours of consecutive sleep, you're actually constricting blood flow to your brain. You think that might get in the way? of your productivity and your success? Absolutely. So whether it's movement, whether it's food, whether it's meditation, whether it is something around sleep, choose three non-negotiables that starting today, you're not going to skip no matter how busy you feel. Okay. Number four is vitamin U. You might be blocking yourself because you're not taking in enough vitamin U. So what is vitamin U? It's not the letter U, it's Y-O-U. Not enough solitude. Now, some of some listeners here might kind of be going, wait a minute, but I'm a social creature and we being social is really healthy for us. And I love my masterminds that I'm a part of and things that I that I do. And that's all great. And there's a time and a place for it. And and it it certainly is true that our DNA wires us to be social beings and we do well, we do best with contact and that kind of thing. But there's a role that solitude has for it too. So I'm not, uh, has for you as well. I'm not talking about the lone wolfing thing. Um, That's not my recommendation. Lone wolfing, like doing everything alone, never asking for support. But that is the most common use of aloneness that I see out there. Absolutely. But I'm talking about something different, which is vitamin U, time that you take for solitude. And this can be, I recommend a three hour, uh, a three hour time frame on the weekend or whatever your schedule likes, looks like, find that time. But a two to three hour time that you are with yourself on a date with yourself, with no agenda, nothing that you need to do. So this is not the same thing as taking the kids skiing or to the beach or something like that. You know, it's, it's not the same as going with a bunch of friends to the spa. Those are wonderful things to do. I enjoy it very much. Uh, but this is true solitude, solitude time alone for three hours. You might read a book. I invite you to be away from technology when you do that. Maybe you take a hike. Maybe you go to that spa, but you go where nobody 
it knows you, you know, where you're just there alone. Um, it really doesn't matter what you're doing, except for that you're not in engagement with others so that you can turn, to, turn your focus inward. And it's very intentional. It's rest and recovery for your brain and your heart and your soul. And you can call it a weekly refresh or you can call it vitamin U, but schedule it, plan it and take it and see what shifts for you. The number five way you could be getting in your own way is subscribing to, to the channel of the inner critic. And I invite you to unsubscribe, release that inner critic. So notice when you're critical of yourself, are you a perfectionist? Now, that's a word that in our culture, sometimes people are proud about and it, and it sounds like almost a good thing. It's a badge of honor. But perfectionism is really an inner critic. And an inner critic will get in your way every single time you set out to create and accomplish something. And in the worst cases, the inner critic will convince you to just stop altogether and that you can't do it. And sometimes you don't even realize it because the pattern is so practiced. It's been practiced from such a young age, like I spoke of, um, and you don't even notice it anymore. But if the subconscious has the habit of being critical of other people, then that's a sign that you're probably even more critical about yourself. So look for signs of where you critique others, where you judge others. It's an indication that the same thing is turned inward toward yourself, whether you realize it or not. And criticism is such a mirror. So take that as the opportunity that it is to say, okay, where can I be more free with myself? Where can I let go of some rigidity and some rules and some expectations? And where can I just cut myself a break? So the inner critic, it's a role really of thoughts and of emotion. And you can figure out what's going on with the inner critic both ways. You can either notice an emotion that feels really bad, or you can notice and be aware of a thought that is critical. Most people will be able to notice the emotion first. So when you feel tense, when you feel stressed, when you feel like it's not enough and you'll never catch up and you're behind and, and what you did wasn't good enough, Notice that emotion and allow it because, again, we can't be collecting energy and not releasing any. The, the deposits and the withdrawals need to be balanced. The inhale and the exhale of breath, it needs to be balanced. So notice when you're feeling that tension, that disappointment, that frustration with yourself, that, that um, feeling that comes when it's like, I'm behind and I didn't do enough. Pause, breathe, feel it. Feel it for a little while until you fully are, are, are stopped in your motion and you feel exactly what that emotion feels like all over your body and then release. And you can release it with something as simple as a forced exhale, 10 seconds. <sighs> when you are intentional about it and you might even verbalize it in your thoughts or out loud. I'm releasing the disappointment. I'm releasing the frustration. I'm releasing the anger. I'm releasing the judgment of myself. And then do. And that alone will shift your energy. When you feel that emotion, if you, if you are inclined and if there's time and space for it, you could also then ask yourself, what was I thinking? that caused that emotion. And then you can change, you know, work on changing this, the thought, but really you'll notice the emotion first and it'll be more, the most obvious. And the release, the release can be ongoing. It can be a one minute rescue right in the middle of these of the day. So those are the five most common ways that leaders get in their own way. And all of these things are energetic creation and, and success as, and I'm defining success really as creating what you intend to create, whatever that is. It's not about it being a specific thing. Creating what you intend to create 
will only happen when you're maintaining a high vibration and when you are being an open channel. The body can block that, the brain can block that, the emotion can block that, the thoughts can block that, the daily habits like even a calendar or not keeping a calendar can block that. So practice at least one thing that I've shared here today. And don't do it once. Put it into a consistent practice. Identify, I I would start with identify the one that as I spoke about it, you already knew it was your block. Take action on it in the 24, next 24 hours. And if you're really ready to go deep with mastering your energetic attunement, the Spiritual Wealth Creation program is now open. And that's a bit.ly also Spiritual Wealth Creation. It's a six month container where we practice the spiritual wealth creation method. And I mentor you and help you find those blocks as they're happening, when they're happening, and find the ways to release them in the way that's most effective for you. So if you're interested, again, it's bit.ly, spiritual wealth creation. Take a look. We can talk about it. And uh, I'll drop that link in the show notes as well. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this freeing. And I will be with you next time on I Am Vibrant. Bye for now. 